All right, if you're a person who's ever given birth before and you feel comfortable, comment, stitch, whatever makes you happy, if you got the epidural or not, and what influenced your decision and how it went if you feel so inclined. I'm 34 weeks pregnant. I am trying to work on my birth plan, which I know is more of like a birth idea or suggestions, but I'm trying to figure out how I feel about the epidural and I've got nothing. Hey friend, I've done the labor thing twice, but I also help people through labor all the time. So hopefully this can help you make that informed and empowered decision about whether or not you want an epidural. Number one, I do not care. Well, you do, okay? I will be your cheerleader if you do not want an epidural. I will be your fairy drug mother if you do. If you are someone who is wanting to go unmedicated, I see two types of people come in wanting an unmedicated birth. There's one type of person who has prepared their entire pregnancy, understanding how their body best copes and is able to access those coping techniques when they need them. There is another group of people who would like an unmedicated uh, birth that have learned about the techniques, but are not able to access those when they need them most. And really, you won't know which group you will belong to until you meet yourself in labor. The difference between those two groups of people is pain in one group and suffering in the other. There are women who never need to pull that tool out of the toolbox. They pull others out that are helpful to them in labor and they never need to reach for that epidural. I thought I was gonna be in that first group, but I met myself in labor and found out that I belong to the second group. Because when I met myself in labor, I looked like I was undergoing an exorcism. And I own that about myself. So let me give you some information on the tool in your toolbox that is an epidural. So number one, what is an epidural? It's kind of like an IV that goes in your back uh, that give, will give you continuous pain medication throughout your labor. It's like an IV because the needle doesn't stay in, but there's like a little tiny catheter that stays in your back. It goes below the level of your spinal cord. So things like getting paralyzed, uh, permanent nerve damage where you're walking funny for the rest of your life, those chances are less than the risk of you getting in a plane crash in a commercial airplane in the United States. Still a risk, but very unlikely. Most common thing that can happen after an epidural is a drop in your blood pressure. That's because everything relaxes. Now, we do things to prepare for this. We give you like a fluid bolus before, um, and then we also check your blood pressure, usually every five minutes for that first 30 minutes, just to make sure we're good. And if your blood pressure does drop, we can fix it very quickly. We have medicines that we can give you to bring it back up. And then after that first 30 minutes, we're usually pretty good. About one in 100 people get a spinal headache, which is terrible but there are things that we can do to fix it. Other things that can happen. Uh, it can work well on one side and not the other. There's ways that we can fix that. Um, it can not work at all, and the remedy to that would be doing it again. It can either elongate your labor or make your labor faster. A lot of times if I see people getting it super early, it can kind of slow things down. But if you're moving and grooving, you're up and around, you get in that active labor stage and you get to that point where you're like, I need an epidural now, usually your body relaxes and allows you to kind of, your body to do what it needs to do without you fighting the pain. Not so great things about an epidural. Uh, you can't get up and walk around. So if walking around is really important to you, that might be a deterrent. And that's because your legs will be very jello-y. Most places who do epidurals uh, will give you a catheter, and that is because your brain cannot communicate with your bladder effectively, and a full bladder or a bladder that can't empty itself fully can both prolong your labor and also put you at risk for hemorrhage. The good thing about an epidural is that most of the time you can't feel the catheter. I slept through getting my catheter. I also want to tell you, guess what's in an epidural? Fentanyl. Oh my God, it's so crazy. And that can freak a lot of people out. But here's what you need to know about that. We don't get it from Larry down the street, okay? We use it in the way that it was intended. And using fentanyl in combination with a medicine like bupivacaine, a numbing medicine, uh, can actually lower the amount of numbing medicine that you need because it is doing it. It works well together, basically. So if we're comparing things like using fentanyl in the IV, so if you're asking for IV pain medicine and then comparing that to like the epidural fentanyl, um, your baby gets less of the epidural fentanyl than the IV fentanyl because the epidural fentanyl stays in the epidural space and a very, very negligible amount goes to like your, your blood supply where your baby's getting that stuff. 
uh, pain of an epidural, okay? The worst part of an epidural is the numbing shot, okay? If you've ever had like dental surgery or like an abscess drained or something, that numbing part is the worst part. It feels like a pinch and a burn, angry bee sting. But then after that, it feels like they're pushing on you with like a pencil eraser. So it's there's nothing like sharp. It just feels vague and weird. When they thread the catheter in, you may feel like a funny bone sensation down one leg or the other that lasts for about a half a second. But 99% of my patients say the IV hurt worse or that contractions were way worse. And the ones that say the epidural was really, really painful are the ones that are not able to get into that really good position to sit stilled for the epidural. So we're having to spend a little bit more time doing it. Good position for an epidural, okay? You're gonna drop your shoulders like you don't have a care in the world, chin to your chest, and then you're gonna curl around your baby like a, like a angry Halloween cat. But let's say that you're watching this and you're like, listen, I have unmedicated dreams. I'm gonna give you some tricks on how to prepare mentally, okay? This is not a physical game, this is a mental game on how to best uh, prepare yourself to be most likely to not uh, need or want an epidural in labor. You need to put yourself in very uncomfortable slash painful situations for one minute at a time, over and over and over, just to, just to prepare yourself for the mental game. You can do anything for one minute, tell yourself that. So like hold ice for a minute, do wall sits for a minute. It's just preparing your brain, okay? Also, mantras that are helpful to patients that I care for are, you never have to have that contraction ever again, and that is one less contraction that you have to have before meeting your baby. Because there's only a certain amount of contractions that you're gonna have. Where I see people have the most grief around pain control in labor is when they have married themselves to doing things a certain way and it doesn't go the way that they thought because then they feel shame and guilt about their decisions that they've made in labor. And they grieve what they thought they should have done, which is why I'm a big fan of birth vibes, meaning that you plan for how you want to be communicated with in labor. Who do you want on your support team? What are uh, physical sensations that feel good to you, don't feel good to you? Like, do you like somebody playing with your hair? Do you not that like that? Do you need a fan? Do you, um, what information do you need in order to make decisions? How long do you need to make those decisions? Those are all things that you can really prepare for. I do have a free, um, is a birth vibes, uh, like birth plan type template in my, um, in my bio thing. You can, you can download it or whatever. I don't care. It's free. Um, but it will help you to prepare for the things that you can plan, um, without having the grief if things don't go the way that you thought they would. Anyway, I know that this is not all encompassing, but I hope that this helps you to make your own informed, empowered decisions. I'm so excited for you. You're going to be there so soon. And bye.